as you can see, this, this whole paper glass plate thing is really just like. Hello everyone, Larissa here, and this video comes to you via Up Houses and Trees, where I blog about sustainable design, sustainable living, sustainable eating, sustainable everything. If those are things that interest you, then please check it out at uphousesandtrees.com. If you are interested in sustainability and in creativity, then please subscribe to this channel to follow me on all of my sustainable and my creative endeavors. Much like in my last video uh, where I give tips on buying land to build on, uh, this video also has two parts. Um, instead of it being part at the beginning and a part at the end, I'm going to kind of interweave the two parts. The first part is sustainable travel tips, um, which you can also read about in a full blog post on Of Houses and Trees, which I will link to the blog post itself down below. Uh, but I'm also going to be talking about my family's experience in um, Arizona, where we recently took a family trip, not just with the four of us, but with my husband's um, parents and his sister and our brother-in-law and their children as well. And the reason that I want to talk about the uh, experience that we had on the trip is because I, I want to talk about um, expectations versus reality. I think that's something that is a hugely important topic in the realm of sustainability and in green living and it's not something that we talk about a lot. Even myself, I'm probably guilty of glossing over the reality and the um, some of the challenges that you can have when you're trying to live a more eco-friendly, sustainable life. Um, I try not to gloss over those things. I'm not exactly like shiny, happy, glossy um, kind of person. In our effort to show how easy it is and how people shouldn't be afraid to give it a try, we can sometimes set the bar for expectations a little bit high. I want to talk a little bit about how I expected the trip would go um, as far as us trying to be um, as sustainable and as environmentally responsible as we could and also how about what actually happened because I think that that's really important and I think it was a good lesson for me which hopefully means that it's a good lesson for anyone out there who is watching this right now. So my first tip is to do your research. So really everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video and everything that I talk about in the corresponding blog post is about researching um, everything that you can to make sure that your trip goes as smoothly and as sustainably as possible. What you don't want is to end up somewhere else in the world, away from your home, away from your normal routine, and to find yourself thinking like, oh, I totally didn't expect this, or I wish I would have brought that, or if I would have known, and this is exactly what happened to us. I'm a huge researcher. I mean, obviously I have a blog that's based on a lot of research and I make videos that I have to do a lot of research for. And I actually worked as a research assistant for several years. So I love researching and honestly, I will admit I'm pretty good at it. But something that I didn't do was I didn't put a ton of research into where we were going before we left for our trip. So the unique aspect of this trip was that we didn't plan it ourselves. Um, we are very lucky and blessed to have Devin's parents. Our, my in-laws are extremely kind and generous people and they wanted to treat us to a trip, which is great, which is amazing. But so because they had already planned where we were going and they had booked a hotel for us, I didn't do as much research as I normally would have. And what I should have done is when I learned of all of these things, I should have researched not to to pick other options because those were already sort of pre-designated, but I should have researched so that I would have been more prepared. Um, I would have brought things that I, when I was there, I wish I would have had and that I would, or that I would have just been expecting different things that surprised me because I wasn't ready for it. Number two, after you do your research would be to make sure that you plan um, your travel itinerary to be uh, as eco-responsible as possible. So if that's um, flying on a plane, then check out more alternative airlines or airlines that are a little bit more um, environmentally forward. And there's a website, uh, alternativeairlines.com, that talks about some of those airlines and talks about the different things that they prioritize. So I will also link to that below. Of course, if you have an option to not fly, um, that's awesome because flying is one of the most um, carbon emitting things that you can actually do. So if you can um, drive like 
with a whole bunch of people in the car so that you're minimizing the amount of cars on the road if the car that you choose is a car that is either your car and it's one that's really good on gas or um, if you have a hybrid or if you're able to rent a hybrid or rent a vehicle as a fuel conserving vehicle which is what we did um, that was something that I did remember to do was when we rented our vehicle that we would need after we flew down was to choose something um, that I knew would at least have better fuel efficiency and of course there are all kinds of other options that take no fuel at all, such as bike riding or kayaking or walking. Number three on my list is to look for a sustainable hotel option. This hotel that we stayed at, it wasn't really the most sustainable uh, hotel, but there are so many other things that you can look for. Um, you can stay at eco resorts. You can stay in hostels where you share space and resources. You could um, simply just camp in a trailer or a tent. But if you do end up staying at a hotel, there are plenty of hotels that do have um, eco initiatives. So make sure that you check their websites before you visit. Number four on the list is packing so important um i used to be a chronic overpacker i was like the person who was like this is the suitcase that the airline says i can take i will now pack it as absolutely full as i possibly can with different clothing and shoe and accessory and accoutrement options so that when i am there i can just pick from all these different things and just you know i won't have to plan so much ahead i can just decide when i'm there what i want to wear and what i want to use um, that has definitely changed within the last few years i'm totally one of the like pack as little as i possibly can i actually find it to be really fun um, for example if you check out like the carry-on size try and fit everything in the carry-on and see if you don't even maybe need a checked bag. Extra luggage adds extra weight to your flight, which of course means that it takes more fuel. Bringing extra stuff means that you have to take care of that extra stuff. Maybe you're gonna be having to be doing more laundry. If you're bringing extra like cosmetics or toiletries, then that means you have to deal with the packaging waste if you're running out. Um, I think it's just best to just try and be as simple as possible. And then that way you can focus on what's important, which is this amazing place that you've traveled to and not so much on, hmm, what should I wear today? I will say that probably the number one, I'm gonna say foobar, on my part, I brought our, you know, our zero waste essentials. So, you know, I brought water bottles for everybody. I brought cutlery for everybody. Um, I made sure to bring like different snacks that wouldn't be like an individual packaging um, so that we weren't making tons of waste. Um, I made sure that I brought like all of our own toiletries so we wouldn't have to use the ones at the hotel. We wouldn't have to open up the packaging. We could just save those for somebody else. But what I didn't pack was reusable plates and the reason that I didn't is because I knew we were staying in a hotel and when we do go um, like camping into places where I know we're gonna be having more picnics or eating at picnic tables or eating outside then yeah of course I always bring our reusable plates but I thought well we're gonna be in a hotel what are we gonna need reusable plates for but the hotel and I shall not name names the hotel had a free morning breakfast a beautiful wonderful spread that included um, vegan options, which I was very happy about, um, but they had paper plates. Paper plates. Plates of made of paper that you would eat off of and then throw into the garbage. And so we're talking like just us, my family of four. That's four plates per day over a week long stay. Like the thought of that times all of the guests at the hotel and the garbage and it's just like it it honestly made me want to puke and it makes me want to puke thinking about it we did not throw things away every single day we actually the very first day that we were there we took our paper plates i would take them back to the hotel room and i would wash them off and then i would we'd bring them back down the next day the whole thing could have been avoided if i would have just brought our plates and I'm not talking about those like fancy schmancy like bamboo cutlery and plate sets with the matching bamboo straw ta-da we got like plastic scratched up plate kids plate um, that I bought for my child when she was a baby who is she's now almost six years old this is the plate that her and her sister well we have various plates like this these are the ones that they use every single day for their meals and that whenever we go camping I bring them with us 
Should have brought this with us on our trip to Arizona. Don't know why I spaced on that one. A silicone straw, again, spaced. Totally forgot to bring this, but I just fixed that by avoiding straws. This spoon and this fork come from a set. These are what my daughters use every single day when they eat, and I did remember to bring these on our trip, and we used them all the time. It's nothing fancy, but it works. And you know what? The environment doesn't care if you're fancy. It just cares that you care. And my fifth and final thing that I want to talk about is sustainable eating. I tend to eat plant-based most of the time. And when I travel, I try to also eat plant-based most of the time. Again, because we were with other people in the family who they don't eat plant-based, um, there were things that were offered that I didn't eat, or perhaps things that I did eat that I normally wouldn't, like the piece of ice cream cake at my nephew's birthday party. But on the whole, I think we did a really good job. Even when you're traveling somewhere that isn't well known for having plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, options, you'll be very surprised if you just take a look at the menu or go to the grocery store, what you can find. Most people who work in restaurants are very accommodating. I've never had problems um, asking for either substitutions or asking questions about things on the menu. Um, my favorite meal on our trip to Arizona was kind of like a stir fry salad bowl. This restaurant that we were at, it wasn't known for being vegan or vegetarian, but um, yeah, I was able to find something plant-based and it was delicious and I was really happy um, that I had made a sustainable choice for the planet and a healthy choice for myself. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Do hoverboards exist? Nope, nope, nope. Which one is a spoon? Your vehicle. It's too big. Can't, you, can't, you can't be in the video. You have to go, sweetie. Look, mama can still see you. You're still in there. Has this been in the background the whole time?